So in terms of the first category, um, body sensations, just want to say a little bit here about what I mean by that and what, what, what I'm including in the instructions for noting body sensations. As I said before, um, one way to understand what we're doing in noting body sensations is we're taking the fifth sense, the fifth physical sense, what we've been noting as touching or feeling. And we're essentially allowing ourselves to become more granular with exactly what kinds of sensations we're noticing in the body. We could just still continue to note touching or feeling. That's always an option. But here we can also note anything that we notice is happening in the body. Touching, feeling, warmth, pressure, coolness, twitching, aching, releasing. These are examples of what I'm noticing in real time happening in the body, different kinds of sensations. And in a way, this, there are so many kinds of physical sensations in part because of how our biology is. There are many different kinds of what are called transducers in the body. That is, there are many different ways in which the body interprets physical input and transduces or translates that into electrical impulses that go up to the brain. And um, some transducers are focused on temperature, some on pain, some on pressure. There are many different kinds of uh, ways in which our body is actually, um, has evolved to be able to interface with the world. And we're opening to all of that kind of detail here in the fifth um, sense with body sensations. Now, it's also true that we can understand the body not just in terms of the five senses. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, four different levels at which we could, we could uh, define and understand the body. And we'll be working with multiple of these in, in this practice, actually. So the first way is what I just described, uh, noticing the body in terms of this fifth sense and just unpacking the fifth sense. Another way of defining the body would be to include all of the five first five physical senses as being the body. So seeing, hearing, tasting, and smelling, although those are different sense organs, and they, uh, they also uh, translate information differently, smelling and tasting, these are both what are called chemosenses. They use chemicals, they translate chemical inputs into electrical information in the brain. Um, seeing, of course, optic, hearing, waves, um, we're taking these different kinds of physical information. We're understanding, interpreting them in our, in our um, neurobiology, if you look at it from that point of view. And all of these are what we normally and, and, and often think of as the body, um, although we don't always differentiate between these two definitions of body. But here we could. We could say, okay, well, all the five physical senses is the body. A third way of understanding the body, and I'd say this would be, would be a little bit more of a classical Buddhist understanding, is we could say all six senses are the body. Because the mind and body, at least in Eastern philosophy, is not often in the same way that in Western philosophy, uh, it's not often separated or distinguished from each other. You know, there was no Descartes in the East, um, at least as far as I know. And so these contemplatives are sitting down and they're actually exploring their experience, their sensory experience, really putting a lot of attention on, on that kind of phenomenological investigation. And in doing so, what I found, what the tradition holds, what many people have discovered, is that doing that experiment leads to an experience of noticing that thoughts and feelings and sensations are all have a similar kind of quality. They're all part of this one whole experience. They're not fundamentally separate. They're all interpenetrating. They're all influencing each other in kind of complex ways. And we could call all of this our body. Um, and, and here we're using body in the sense that in the Vajrayana tradition, when they say where there's experience, there's a body. 
we're using it in that sense um, of the word um, that every body has experience. Um, and in, in the Tibetan tradition, they actually have a whole kind of idea of there being three different bodies that we have that we're just not necessarily aware of. We have our gross physical body, um, which they call the uh, Nirmanakaya, Kaya's body. Um, and then we have a, a subtle body. Um, this is kind of like the body we experience a lot of meditative states in, or we experience dream states in, uh, or, or they would say we experience in the bardo, you know, as we in between life and death. Um, and this body, something they call the Sambhokakaya. Um, and then there is a, a yet another body in that model, what they call the, the truth body or the causal body, the formless body, the, um, the Dharmakaya. And this body is the body that experiences nirvana, our formless nature. And from the Tibetan perspective, uh, and I think this is kind of interesting, you know, we're always, we're, we have all three of these bodies. Now, whether or not we are in touch with and awake to our embodied nature at all these levels is another question. Um, but that all of these bodies are part of our experience uh, is kind of what they contend. And that when we awake up to our, em we embody these different uh, types of bodies, we, we come into our capacity to notice all these gross, subtle, and formless kinds of sensations, um, then uh, we could be say, said to be awake. So just a little bit there on the different ways that we can be thinking of the body. Uh, the, I'm gonna throw one more in here, which is really related to this practice, to social meditation. And I think it relates for me as well to this whole notion of Meta Dharma, which I'm also very interested in teaching right now, exploring. And that is that it's not, in all three of these definitions, we've really been implicitly focusing on ourselves, on our individual experience. That's kind of been the implicit assumption. Uh, and that's often how meditative traditions focus. Uh, there's a sort of hidden assumption that, that what matters is your individual subjective experience. But here in the practice of social noting, I think we're really attempting to break that uh, assumption down a little bit and to question it. And so part of how we could define the body in this fourth definition is that the body is not just the six senses, but it also includes um, each other and our environments. So we are also making up each other's experiences. We're deeply influencing each other's experience moment to moment, even when we're not together and we're just thinking about someone. And uh, suddenly someone pops into our head, a conversation that we had, that starts to influence our experience. We're constantly being relational in our, in our kind of human nature. And also the environment is constantly affecting and impacting us. Of course, we've gotten good at trying to, uh, you know, in the modern world at modulating that and making it just so. But even so, you know, you can avoid in the modern world many environmental situations, loudness of the city, you know, uh, plastics and heavy metals in our water. You know, there's all kinds of things that we're contending with in our environment uh, that are constantly affecting our state of mind and our physical experience. Uh, and so this third definition of body that I'd offer is experiencing the body of the self in culture and nature. All three of these informing this experience. So there again, I wanted to lay this out because um, so often when we talk about the body, as a case, uh, in the case of the first category, um, there are different definitions and meanings of what of what people are thinking about when they think about the body. And sometimes we just start talking past each other. You know, we actually might agree if we if we recognized what we meant. Um, so, so I think that can be helpful sometimes to clarify. Um, and like I said, in, in in this first category, part of what we're practically working with is this first definition of expanding the body to include the expanding the fifth sense, touching, feeling, to include all the different granular sensations we could notice there. There's also two other special categories I wanna mention uh, with body sensations that, that I'd also include here. And they don't, aren't exactly covered just by this fifth sense. They're much more related to some of the other definitions like the second and third. Um, and these are posture and breathing. These are kind of special categories of experience. So we're always taking some kind of posture. Most of us not right now are sitting. 
And so instead of just noticing, say, the touching or pressure of the sitting bones touching the chair, the touching of the feet on the floor, we might also at some point tune into the whole gestalt of our bodies to notice how our bodies are in space in this posture. And we might simply note that as sitting, for instance. This is kind of connected to what in Western psychology is called the sixth sense, not to be confused with the Buddhist sixth sense of the mind, proprioception, that tracking of the body in space in relationship to itself and in, in space. And then there's all kinds of things related to the posture that you might also note. For instance, you might notice sitting, but you also might notice at some point that you're slouching. And you can note that slouching. And then you might notice, oh, there's a lifting of the head and the neck lifting. At the same time, I might feel the lower back sinking, flattening. And the result of that is a kind of lengthening of the spine. All of those things you could also note, anything related to the posture and how it changes and moves that can't be simply reduced to a tactile sensation or note, but is rather related to the movement of our posture and our bodies, that also can be noted here in this category, uh, body sensation. And so too, with the breath, this is a process where we can tune into the tactile sensations of the breath. You might feel coolness at the tip of the nostrils, or you might simply notice breathing in breathing out, or in, out, or rising as the chest rises or the abdomen rises and falling as they fall. You might simply just note breathing. Any variation on any of those notes that help you tune into the process of breathing as something which is a continuous physical process uh, is also um, welcomed in this category of body sensation. 